For In Motion, I'm Kurt Parker. For years, America has relied on coal as the backbone of its energy infrastructure. It quite literally fueled the Industrial Revolution. Coal was king. But the pollution that is caused when coal is burned is a significant problem. EPA restrictions have drastically cut back the amount of smokestack pollutants that U.S. factories and power plants were emitting. But even with that, coal-burning power plants still account for more man-made greenhouse emissions than all modes of gas-powered transportation combined. And for that, coal has taken a back seat in America's energy awareness. But with oil topping out at $140 a barrel, coal might find itself in the front seat at least for a while. Indeed, it is an abundant domestic energy resource. The other thing, of course, is the key word being domestic. We don't have to depend for foreign supplies of coal. And those two things together are pretty profound reasons to think about using coal. Domestic abundance. The U.S. sits on more than a quarter of the estimated coal reserves of the entire world. In our quest to move toward alternative fuels and greater fuel efficiency, coal can have a huge part to play. Coal is certainly going to be an important component of electricity generation for decades to come. But in addition to that, we can use coal to make clean synthetic liquid or gaseous fuels. We can use coal as a source of special chemical products and as a source of high value carbon materials. Schobert is a professor of fuel science at Penn State University. His research supports that coal will be an important player in the energy near future of the U.S. But before that role can be fully assessed, how do we reduce or eliminate the negative environmental impact of burning coal? We can just throw it in, have enough temperature, have enough oxygen, and we'll be able to generate the heat we desire for generating steam for making electricity. So that's really like hitting a, a, a a pebble, or an egg, if you will, with a, with a great big sledgehammer. We're just overkilling um, the chemistry uh, to get the product we want. But there's plenty of other times where it's much more desirable to be subtle in our approach. Coal is a very complex substance. There are thousands of documented types of coal, all with their own specific design. Understanding that design is the key to developing new ways to utilize coal. Jonathan Matthews is an associate professor of energy and mineral engineering at Penn State and seeks to develop this understanding with the use of powerful computers that construct three-dimensional models. What we can do now with coal molecular modeling has really come a long way since the, uh, the early 40s where the first coal model actually came out of uh, Penn State by a German scientist who had escaped the war. Um, and, and he'd put together a, an interesting uh, coal model, drew it by hand, put it together with these uh, space filling models, these little balls and sticks, and really created quite a, an interesting way of starting to look at this complicated material. I come along, I'm doing very much the same sort of thing, except instead of using pen and paper, I have a computer to do my complex calculations. We want to do something more interesting with coal rather than just burning it. What's desirable is to pull out the material that we may want to do liquid fuels with. So if you want to make coal to liquids and you're going via a direct route, what would be really nice is to be a sort of molecular level surgeon and say, I would like to break specific bonds or a specific range of bonds and then I can extract what I'd like out of this coal. So instead of hitting it with a sledgehammer, I get to do molecular surgery and start thinking a little bit more uh, intelligently more scientifically in how to deal with this complicated material. This understanding is what allows gasification and liquefaction to be a reality. Reacting coal with steam can create carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas that can be used as a combustible fuel. In an additional process after gasification, coal can be converted into a liquid fuel. In both instances, the energy output from these two methods is more efficient than just simply burning coal. But regardless of the promise of coal, the same problem looms, pollution. So is coal clean? We've certainly taken care of a lot of the issues. We added bag houses to capture the, the particulates that were escaping. We added uh, uh, catalytic converters, if you will, on the end of the uh, combustion process to deal with issues like NOx 
and, and we captured uh, sulfur dioxide. These are components that would go into acid rain. We're now de dealing with capturing mercury. So we're becoming cleaner and cleaner. And as the, the definition changes, then the science and the technology catches up. And if we're willing to pay and have a little bit more expensive electricity, we can make coal clean. For In Motion, I'm Kurt Parker.